Hey guys, it's your girl Najwa. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Um, it has been busy, 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 and I literally have just caught up on like most of my Success Squad channels. Oh my god, a lot is going on. Like, while I have been basically just getting myself back together since suffering a terrible tragedy, I feel like I'm finally feeling like myself again. But now that I finally feel like myself again and I come back and I look at what's been going on in Success Squad world, it's like everything is just caught on fire. People are running around. You know, it's just like, Jesus. Um, yeah, I watched a few uh, Brian Squaddy's videos, which I love her accent. Oh, I just like, I all the time wish that I had a better accent. Like, I'm like almost embarrassed of my stupid American accent. I wish I had a... African accent or British accent. I just always feel like I got the lesser accent, but whatever. Um, I watched some Tisa Tell stuff. She is hilarious. So mean, so spicy sometimes, but hilarious. And I watched some uh, Sexy Squad Family TV, of course. And um, I just wanted to share with you guys some of my high level thoughts because, as you guys know, we're five days out from the coronation. Uh, stuff is going crazy. People is like, it's like people are running around like, oh, you know <laughs> so I just wanted to give you guys some of my high level thoughts so the first thing I want to talk to you about something this oath that people are going to be taking at the coronation and you know I know that they made such a big deal about saying that they are going to you know be approaching this coronation to have a modern feel and all this stuff I'm really, really disappointed because as I've said before, I don't have a huge problem with the monarchy. You know, I have a problem with their problematic past, you know, and the problematic past of the kind of present day. I mean, it's not even just like the past of a very long time ago. That's also problematic, which they really don't make any effort to say, hey, sorry for slavery, you know. But even just in this day and age, just stuff, looking at all the successes have gone through with that family is very, very, very disheartening to look at. But beyond that, beyond that, you know, I feel like, and I've mentioned this in another video, with Queen Elizabeth's reign, people actually were excited about it. We're days out from the coronation. I think on Wednesday, Camilla and Charles were in Liverpool. People, not my king, not my king, keeps happening. And it's like they're not waking up to see where they're at fault, where they can improve. And it's really a, a, a carnival of so-called experts, but it's not one that I'm super duper angry at, unlike many people that I feel like are sort of, in arms alongside me, you know, in Sussex Squad, in, in spirit, you know. I feel like a lot of people, and, and you know, a lot of squaddies really feel anger. Like, and I feel anger too, but more than anger, I feel pity. I feel pity for these people because it's just like, it's, what, it's like when you have someone who has mental illness or when you have someone who has... I don't know, a problem with attention. Maybe they've got attention deficit disorder or maybe they've got an anxiety disorder, you know. And for them, this warped reality that they lived in is super duper bizarre for us, you know, as the outside viewer to look in, as someone who's perfectly sane. But for them, that is really the reality that they live in, that they created. And this is just what I see from the royal family the senior royals who were left behind, not from the successes, of course. And I guess I didn't see that in Elizabeth. I, 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 I saw Elizabeth as a very sober person, okay? She has had problematic stuff too. But in general, I saw her as a very sober person, A, and I saw her as a person who was willing to set down her life for Great Britain. Like, you can clearly see that this woman was devoted. So let me read something to you really quick, just to solidify the vast differences between what is going to be Charles's reign and his mother's reign. 
just to show you the vast differences of motivations and why I really, really pity these people. So, this is the oath. I'm going to read this out to you. This is the oath that apparently this coordination is so modern because it's, it's going to have the audience interact with it. But you, you, I wish they could have found a better way to enter. I mean, okay. So they're going to have the audience recite a statement, you know. And I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know about this. I heard about this from Tisha Tells. But I just had to analyze this a little bit because this is, this is so crazy to me. Okay. So it says, they will be invited to say the words. And this, this article was from, I think it was The Guardian. So it says, they will be invited to say the words, I swear that I will pay true allegiance to your majesty and to your heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I'm going to read that one more time. I swear that I will pay true allegiance to your majesty and to your heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. Okay, so, like, that would have been cool back in, like, I don't know, 1650 or something. But now, that just seems so <laughs> pretentious and pomp and elitist and, and superior, it has superiority just, like, dripping all over it. It's, it's, it's like it's almost got a threat wrapped up in there. It's like it says, or else, dot, 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 at the end. To me, it's almost like they're just saying, <laughs> let me calm down, because I just like, okay. Ooh, stop. <laughs> it's like they're saying, we know that we've had a lot of crazy stuff going on lately, okay? We got a daughter-in-law and a son-in-law who doesn't like us, and they're very well validated for saying that, but we don't want to, we don't want you to know that they're validated. And we know that, you know, stuff with our finances has come up under the, the microscope lately, and we want to reiterate that you, before God, you better accept me in my hands or L L L. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me just, let me just bring it down, like, let me just bring it down like a dial. Okay, anyway, um, that's the oath that King Charles is inviting people to say at his coronation. And he thinks, he actually thinks that this is like showing that he's some wonderful leader. But it really just sounds like, like I said, that or else dot, dot, dot. Okay, it's more saying also, you really have to think about this, this dynamic is that it's saying, I'm more important than you. You know, like, I don't see any sentiment about Britain in there. I don't see any sentiment about the British people, about his love for the British people, about the Commonwealth, about his love for the Commonwealth, about his commitment to protecting his people, to protecting his countrymen. All I see here is you better follow, you better do what I say or else. Now, let me read to you something from a speech by the Queen on her 21st birthday, 1947. And just tell me if the tone of this doesn't sound a little different. Okay, and I know that she was younger, I know that times were different, but you either have in your body a want and a need to be there for other people, to be a defender of others, or you don't. So this is from a speech by the Queen on her 21st birthday, 1947, and this is from royal.uk. I'm just going to read a small excerpt because you'll get everything you need out of it. And you guys have probably heard it from the crown. She says, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Let me read it one more time. I declare before you all 
that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. Now, if you were, and I know that wasn't at her coronation, but still, if you heard that and you heard uh, the oath that the, that's going to be taken at King Charles' ceremony or whatever, which monarch would you be like, okay, I'm putting my faith in you? It would definitely be Elizabeth. I'm going to have to break this up into two parts. Let me go ahead and caveat that by saying that I think if I don't break this up into two parts, this video is going to be like an hour long. Um, the other thing, right, okay, so this is, I'm going to make this mostly about um, the coordination, this first part, and the second part we're going to cover Ooh, William and the Markles' is documentaries. They're separate, but both making documentaries around the same time. Very curious, but that's for the second half of this. Let's just talk about this coronation coming up in five days, by the way. This is in five days. It's like it's creeping up on us soon. And I also, just before this, recorded an update in French. So if you're looking at this and you want it in French, uh, you'll get it. Um, okay. So, disappointed or happy? Disappointed or happy? Which one is Charles about Meghan not coming? Is he disappointed or is he happy? Because I'm getting conflicting views. From the Daily Mail, it says that he is happy that Meghan Markle is not coming. But from the mirror, it says he's disappointed that she's not coming. So which one is it? You know, I'm so tired of all of these conflicting things of information. Now, I want to go ahead and say this really quickly. I want to say this really quickly. King Charles, Camilla, William, and Kate. Because... Uh, Brian Scotty's also made a video about Kate being uncomfortable about uh, Meghan Markle. And she talked about how the day that she went on walkabout with Meghan Markle was the most uncomfortable day of her life. You know, it's like, okay, Kate, why are you so uncomfortable around Meghan? Clearly, she's sweet, she's kind, she's warm-hearted. You know, she's an activist, she's a philanthropist. Um, she she is very insightful has great life experience she comes from basically two two parts of the tracks you know she's a biracial woman she's relatable on so many different levels and she's not a kind she's not a mean spirited person at the core of it so what is it, what is it that you're so uncomfortable about but something there's something that i'm seeing a common thread between charles kate William and Camilla and all of them and like I said I don't really have a problem with the monarchy if it acts right like act right and we're good don't act right I don't have to say anything because we live in a day and age where like, information is so accessible people will let you know in a hot second and seeing how much hate that William and Kate and and Camilla and Charles have gotten on Twitter in the past when they've done funky stuff I really don't have to be the world police here but what I see from these four, so you got to think about the fact that Great Britain is one of the biggest colonizers of the world. Like I said, I don't really have a problem with the monarchy because it's so entrenched in the culture. But if you cannot admit this one fact, that this small little island basically colonized the whole freaking world, then, I mean... <laughs> I don't know how you're looking, I, I, I don't know what kind of blinders you're looking at that with. We have a new context today, you know, people, we come from, from Neanderthals who used to eat cannibals, who used to be cannibals, who used to eat human beings, okay? So, clearly, there are sordid things within the past of human history that are not so fun, okay? Blame it on the times. But we have an opportunity today to change that. If the monarchy is going to stay around, great. But change it for the context of what we live in today. The colonizer thing. Great Britain 
it's always been a colonizer, you know, it's got that colonizer mentality. And um, I, I would arguably say, not to sound racist or anything, but African, South American, some Asian, a lot of these cultures are coming from tribalism, where it's like, literally everybody needs to just put in together. There's an old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child, for example. Whereas, historically, okay, European countries, especially Western European countries, like the United Kingdom, like the Netherlands, like Spain, the colonizers have really adopted more of a autocratic mentality. It's like, I tell you to do something and you do it, okay? That's not going to fly over with everybody, you know? And I get the sense. That's the, this is basically essentially why I feel like I, I'm coming from a stance of pity for the four. Because they really don't see what damage they're doing. You know, I kind of think it's sort of similar. And I don't think that there should be anger diverted at them. I think that there should be concern. Because I'll give you a perfect example. Like I said, have you ever been around someone who has anxiety, like crippling anxiety, like lying on the floor in the fetal position anxiety, because I have been around people like that. Have you been around bipolar individuals, for example, or sociopaths or schizophrenic type people, ADD, and, you know, their reality, which is warped, they feel like it is the most real thing in the world. And there's like nothing you can tell them about it. But when those people seek out some sort of help, whatever help that is, if it's a therapy, if it's a support group, you know, if it's like a, a, if it's addiction issues, maybe they reach out like to Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous or whatever it is, that changes them. They come back and they're a different person because they're seeing with a different set of eyes. What I see from the four is that colonizer mentality. You know, and that's why Meghan Markle makes them so uncomfortable. It's because she has a mind of her own. And Harry, too. Harry has been basically the Meghan Markle, the black sheep of the royal family for the longest. And then it's like he found his match and they could just be rebels with causes together. You know, it's like, but Harry was that person long before Meghan came on the scene. And it just doesn't work. And that seems to be what Charles isn't grasping. You know, he goes to Liverpool, and yes, there are people there chill and cheering. But just like during Commonwealth Day, more people showing up. Not my king, not my king, not my king. I think that the four have gotten to this place where they feel like nobody can tell me nothing. Like Kanye West, nah, y'all can't tell me nothing. They've gotten to that place and it's very detrimental to be in that place because whether you're a king or not, what we saw from Elizabeth was that A, her first priority was her people. When we look at Charles from his actions, what we see is his first priority is himself. So, I, you know, unless a little bit of humility can be introduced into this scenario, Unless a little bit of, you know, like accountability, acceptance, except that we are all human beings, whether we were born into the monarchy or not, accept fault if you need to. They, like, I feel like, and I know this is probably going to sound really, really, really silly. I feel like the four, Charles, Camilla, Kate and William, I feel like the four of them all need a training. I feel like they all need a training, like a, just a retreat, you know, a whole day of talking about anti-racism, you know, talking about the struggles and the plights of black people in modern times, um, talking about what it takes to be an anti-racist, talking about these new conversations that are being sparked around 
transphobia and uh, xenophobia and sexism. Like, I feel like they need to be trained on how to have some friggin' empathy because from what I've seen so far, they don't really have any empathy. And I get that, you know? Like, I've ran into many people like this before and they really can be sweethearts. They really can be sweethearts behind the issues that they're dealing with. But like I said, whatever that issue is, ADD, narcissism, anxiety disorder, something is, is, is like a cloud. And so they cannot see clearly. It's like you've got on a pair of glasses, but the glasses have like a frosted, you know, screen, a little screen or film over it. It's like, what's the point of wearing glasses if you're essentially blinding yourself? I don't know what that is with Charles, Camilla, Kate, and William. I, I mean, I, I don't like to make too much speculation on, on people, especially with, you know, the things that I don't like to make too much speculation on. Marriage, mental illness, you know, because those are diagnoses that come from, like, professionals you know I don't like to make too much speculation on that but if I were to make just like a quick assumption on this I've said before I think that Charles is on the spectrum um I don't know if it's true or not but he seems like he could be like a really really high functioning autistic person Camilla and Kate seem to be almost two sides of the same coin and I would say that deals with some deep-seated insecurity um, you know, we see just from the comments that Kate has exhaustively made about Meghan Markle that she's really intimidated by her. And Harry and Meghan, they have something that these four don't have, which is like a natural charisma and a natural, um, how do I want to say it? A natural connection with people. Whereas I think that for the four, it's much. It has to be much more formulaic, because they're just not really um, natural public speakers. They're not natural activists, you know. And so, which is okay. Those things can be taught, but you have to start with empathy in your heart. Like, if you don't have any empathy in your heart, how are you gonna be in public service? I mean, it's just so bizarre. Um, that was it. I mean, I I don't know. Like this. Is, is Charles disappointed that Meghan isn't going or is he happy? Me, of course, I say he's probably happy that she's not coming. But at the same time, he's disappointed because you can't ever please people like this. You know, it's like <sighs> people who don't operate with a level of emotional intelligence, nothing ever pleases them except something that pleases themselves. You know, something that has the end game to truly benefit them themselves. And so, if Megan came to the coronation, she would get a lot of attention, a lot of good attention. So, of course, that would upset Charles. That would also upset Camilla, because it seems like this is a day where Charles is really trying to put like this is my woman this is my woman and I accept her and I love her it seems like he's trying to also put that on the spotlight we gotta like I mean this colonizer mentality this unmovable um non-emotional intelligence having mentality I think the UK it's about time for them to sweep that under the rug if they really want to set a new precedence you know for this day and age Show that you are really there for the people. What did it say again? What did Elizabeth say? I shall be devoted to your service. I shall be devoted to your service. Until people see that. Until people see that you are truly devoted to, to them. Nothing's going to happen. So, um, guys, please let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I'm going to stop this part one here, you know, and we'll continue on with it uh, in a separate video. Um, let me know what you think, because we're getting close and close and close to this coronation. I think that after the coronation, as I said before, I feel like a lot of us can A, just take a, a deep breath and just let it go. But I also think it will be a very, very 
instrumental, informative, important, um, intangible moment where we, we can really see what the outlook looks like moving forward with the relationship between the successes and their family over in the UK and also what's going to happen uh, probably in the foreseeable future concerning the monarch and its relevance with, uh, you know, the UK and the Commonwealth moving forward in general. So um, I would love to know what you guys think. Please let me know in the comments. And uh, if you have not already, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. Hit the bell so you know whenever I post a video.